To conclude this DVD and wrap up our DVD series on creating shaders in HLSL, I want to point out something miraculous that has happened that you may not have noticed. Think back to the first time you watched the introduction to the first DVD in the series. Do you remember how you felt the first time I showed you this sample scene with all these different shader effects? It may have felt a bit overwhelming as you considered learning all the information required to set up a scene like this. At that point in time, shaders may have felt like a bunch of voodoo going on under the hood to make your lot models look cool. A shader was a black box filled with mystical stuff that you could apply, but perhaps you thought shader programming was a bit out of reach. Now, as a result of your study, practice, and the things that you've learned from the DVD series, I hope that you can see this scene with new eyes. From the second DVD in this series, you see the normal mapping, the ambient, diffuse, and specular lighting. You see the light attenuation as the light moves further away from the surfaces. You can see the global illumination lighting using the, uh, the features of diffusely convolved cube maps and ambient occlusion. And not only do you recognize and understand these techniques in the scene, you know the math behind them, and you can write your own shaders that use these and other techniques in your own scenes. And from this final DVD series, you recognize the offset mapping here on these cobblestones on the floor of the scene. You recall we covered offset mapping in chapter one on this DVD. Then if we move a little bit further down the hall, you can recognize the subtle reflections in this metal shader and the mask that we're using to mask dull versions of the metal, or dull areas of the metal with reflective areas of the metal. We covered that in chapters two and three on this DVD. Then moving over here on this blobby ball, you can see the refractions that we covered in chapter four, and it's combined with reflections around the edges using the Fresnel term that we talked about in chapter five. The wavy movement on the ball is created by the vertex animation that we discussed in chapter eight. In the first ball in the scene down here, you can see the detailed norm normal mapping that we went over in chapter six. And finally, in this ball down here on the end, you can see the dissolve effect that we covered in chapter nine. So, like I said before, not only do you see and understand these effects in the scene, but you know the code it takes to create them, and you can use them in your own shaders. This scene, and just about any other scene rendered in real time using HLSL shaders, is no longer something seen as a mystery. The concepts, principles, and code required to create it are all part of you, and you see the scene with new eyes. That feels miraculous to me, and I hope you take some time to appreciate the change that has occurred. As with the previous DVDs, I've included a text file in the content folder on this final chapter. It contains links to additional learning resources, books, shaders on the web, sites with shader tutorials, and other references. I recommend that you check out some of these sources to continue your study of shaders. To continue learning, the best way to do it is to grab a book or download some effect shaders from the web and study the work of others. I wish you the best as you take what you've learned here, add your own creativity into the mix, and go out and create some stunning new effects with HLSL shaders. Good luck.